I've gone on many summer vacations to Yellowstone, but I've always wanted to go and see what Yellowstone would be like in the winter. And since snow biking is kind of my thing, I thought it'd be cool to go see Yellowstone by snow bike. But before going, we decided we'd check with the National Park to make sure snow bikes would be allowed. I mean, it seemed logical that they would be, but the official park rules say the park has specifically prohibited bicycle use to prevent disturbance or harassment to wildlife. The National Park Service believes that the use of snow bikes could create safety hazards along routes on which substantial numbers of snowmobiles and snow coaches operate, such as the groomed roads in the park, and would have unknown impacts to park life. Opportunity for snow bikes exists in the area outside of the park. How does that make any sense? Snowmobiles and snow coaches have less impact than a bike? People can walk on the groomed roads with the snowmobiles, but somehow that would be a safety hazard for people on bikes to use the roads? Or the really crazy one, there are other places you can snow bike, but I guess there's nowhere else you can walk, ski, or ride snowmobiles. Yeah, well, anyway, we decided to snowshoe in instead. Okay, we're going to try this. Uh, this is the one of the sleds I took to uh, the South Pole. I think I'm going to take this sled. And somebody down there in Antarctica was suggesting I put skis on the bottom of my sleds that uh, they would glide better and I didn't do it and I think if they would have glided better it would have been a good deal so I'm going to see if I can take and put that ski on the bottom of that sled and get that set up uh, for our snowshoeing trip so we'll see how this goes okay, so this is the plan got some two by fours we chopped into size and we're going to take and we're going to put that on there and we're going to take some of the grabber screws I'm going to screw through the bottom of the ski into there and counter sink it so that it doesn't drag in the snow. And then we'll go through that with washers and do the skis. These are the old skis from when I was a kid. Well, you know, this is what taught us keep an old crap for years and years and years and years. It's good. <laughs> yeah, we saved like probably 15 bucks if we bought these skis to be up. <laughs> so, add a little bit of weight, but in theory, that'll slide a lot better. Push. Here we are. This is the West Yellowstone Visitor Center and Kendall packing our sleds. And we are getting ready to go. This is where our car is going to stay while we're gone. So we got to get all that stuff into there. I thought the bag would just keep it there. Yep, yeah, what if it tips over? But the other thing is you don't want the, you know, as it rides and stuff, if it falls off the edge and starts, the bag starts dragging on the snow, then that's extra resistance. How's it fall? Okay, here we are, we're at the West Yellowstone entrance. Kendall is uh, working on his music. The entrance is right there. And Kendall is there, and I am waiting for him. All right, let's do this. We we're making great progress. There's the gate. We've gone like a whole 20 feet. And it's 11 o'clock. And we want to be to our camp spot before five. So we got to go six hours. We've got 15 miles. So I guess uh, no stopping for lunch. So according to the sign, this isn't allowed. Kendall's playing with his phone. I guess the bad news is we have cell coverage, so that makes us so we can waste time on cell phones. Today's world, you're never, never really too far out that you can't get to be, talk to people. So the interesting thing is, we're going up river, but it sure feels like we've gone downhill more than up. It's a ranger. How you doing? All doing good? Yep. Awesome. Have fun. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> it's 
see how the trees are all scratched up. So it could be from my antlers, scraping antlers, but it might be bare. Okay, we are here at Madison Junction. Only 16 miles. There's away. Kendall. Hello. And either that. Yeah, I think it's here. Or that. Okay, one of those two is the warming hut. My bed is this one here. Yeah. Yeah, because they said we camp. We camp right behind it. Okay, so we are, uh, what time is it? It's 5.45, I think. This is the warming that hut. We, that we that, visited before we head out. That the, um, for, the ranger said we could stay we, in here. That we it's, ate breakfast. The ranger said we could stay in here instead of setting up a tent, and we may or may not have done that. But we didn't. <laughs> or we may have. Because we ate breakfast. It's like, like uh, the Yellowstone Hilton. It was awesome. And we're going to go in the dark. They groomed the road, and they groomed it last night, and the, and the snowmobiles don't start until 7. And so it'll take them, hopefully there's a wolf pack in the way, and it'll take them an hour or two to get in here. And then we can uh, travel on a nice groomed surface for a while. So, ready? Sure. Okay. We've been going for just short of two hours, right? Yeah. And uh, it's finally gotten light enough that we can actually film something Oh, the river's going that way. Yeah. So we're still going uphill. Yeah, we are. It felt like we'd leveled out a lot. We, yeah. we, we were going pretty steep uphill for a while. This is like our awesome uh, hiking freeway that we're on. And so our biggest fear the last uh, two miles was that we would get attacked by a pack of hungry wolves. Kendall, he's, he's kind of a mean guy. He had uh, hungry like a wolf playing on the stereo the whole way. <laughs> so we could we could eat a snack while we're waiting. Are you hungry? I'm not hungry. No, but um, it would help us work through the day better. And if we're stuck here... Well, snowmobiles will be coming. You can see the baby now, wow. Yeah, well, we're recording it. Sweet. You could whistle. They don't care.
Oh, there's a couple more. Where's the more? It just came on. Oh, so there's wow. three, four, five, there's six. Like there's six seven now. of them or, yeah. or something like that. One, two. That that one's that group's all together too much. I can't count them very well. They're cool, but how they're much, in the way. How much do you need to uh, film them? I mean, you know what I mean. There's just no way we can get by. I mean, look, they're just yeah. they'd be like five feet away. Yeah. And with the baby, that'd be suicide. Plus, well, here comes more. I hope you enjoyed the first part of our Yellowstone in Winter trip. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss part two, where we continue our trip from Madison Junction to Old Faithful, and we check out the lower and midway geyser basins.